So with the Bitcoin spot ETF coming up and coming up fast, the question is, should you pivot all the way into just Bitcoin, leave all alts behind? Well, we're going to take a look at what is actually going on. So first of all, I want to thank everybody for yesterday. We put out a video which talked about the different scam AI videos that were going on. Michael Saylor being one of those that were uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, they were doing the scam ads and we had over uh, 50, 60,000, not 55,000 views. I think it's gonna go a long way to help everybody. So I'm gonna link that video in the description below because I don't need anybody getting ripped off right before we see a massive bull run. So as things move forward and the spot ETF looks like it's uh, going to be approved, the question then is, well, what should you do? I mean, as far as like investment, I can't give you financial advice, but I can tell you there's some people out there that uh, you can take little notes from, one of those being Michael Saylor. And this I believe is the real one, not the AI which we talked about. And as he comes out and says that, hey, MicroStrategy has bought $650 million worth of additional Bitcoin, pushing holdings to $5.9 billion. Now, the reason why I find this fascinating is because a lot of people will tell you, but don't do anything because this is a classic buy the rumor, sell the news uh, as this comes about. And of course, when we get this spot ETF approved, it'll drop and that's when you go in. Well, in all honesty, you can do that. Hopefully it works. Maybe it doesn't. And that's the beauty of dollar cost averaging. And I think I've got to tell you, nobody does it better than this guy, or at least not as much as he's done. So just so everybody gets caught up to speed, MicroStrategy just bought uh, 14,620 Bitcoin for around 615 million. That's an average price of 42,000 per Bitcoin. This pushes the company's holdings to 189,150 Bitcoin worth around roughly $6 billion, which was bought at an average price of 31,168. So right now, if you're the class of 2021, this sounds pretty good to you because maybe you bought it around 60, 65, 67,000. So again, if you stick around long enough, usually things work worth out. But the question then becomes, if this is what's going on and MicroStrategy holds this much Bitcoin, I put a question out today. I said, I'm not sure that this is actually a good thing or a bad thing for decentralization. You can call it decentralization, you can call it concentration of tokens, whatever you wanna say. There's a one entity, an institution, or a business itself that actually owns a whole heck of a lot of Bitcoin, 189,150, and that's 19,592,043, which are actually totally issued or mine. As time goes on, and that's gonna go into the big institutions. I don't know if this was Satoshi's recommendation of what he wanted to have happen, but it's just something to think about. And, and other people say, don't be dramatic. My boy, Jerry Hall says, uh, if in fact, as long as uh, MicroStrategy is live, they will maintain a hold only strategy, which I have to agree with him. And there's a lot of different ones in there and you can kind of take a look at, but there was a lot of good back and forth. I'd like you to read that. I link in the description so you can take a look at what there was said, but you have to think about it this way. If this spot ETF comes through, looks like it's going, looks like it's actually gonna happen. I'm about to wear a, a stupid shirt that I bet uh, Simon Dixon on. The question is, how do we get here? Well, I think it was because Gary Gensler is always talking about how, hey, there's too much price manipulation. So I think a, a couple of things that happened in the last two, three months, which really turned the tide. First of all, they took down Binance. They took down CZ Binance and they got them on the KYC AML and money laundering. And that is a big ploy because now the American government has their talons, their claws into Binance and they can kind of regulate from afar. And of course, CZ Binance has already stepped down. On top of that, just today, we found out that Barry Seibert, who is the CEO of Grayscale, uh, is exiting the Grayscale board. Now, there's a lot of things that were going on between him, the Gemini twins, uh, or the Winklevoss twins, I should say, from the uh, Gemini Centralized Exchange. So he's stepping down, and there was also talk about price manipulation, so they got him too. And now Mark Murphy's gonna exit the Grayscale board. I'm gonna tell you, I think the government has something to do with that, potentially. And then lastly, BlackRock comes in and said, hey, we want to do in-kind transfers, but if you're not going to allow that, no big deal. BlackRock updates the spot Bitcoin ETF proposal to allow cash redemption. So, of course, BlackRock and all the different people that have to do this spot ETF, they're going to have to hold the underlying asset, which is Bitcoin. Now, BlackRock's not holding that. It's going to be Coinbase. But if you want to redeem anything or do anything with it, it's all going to be in cash. It's not going to be in Bitcoin. So no, it's not going to be paid for Bitcoin, but they did have to bend the knee to get things moving. And that, I think, could be a reason why the spot ETF actually does go through. Now, we'll see if it actually happens, but uh, hopefully it does. But again, the question is, what's smart money doing? Well, smart money today is actually going, uh, this is a record long on Bitcoin. So they're all saying that, hey, 
we think the price is going to go up exponentially. Makes a lot of sense. Smart money is record long on Bitcoin have an expected ETF. Data tracking websites, macro, macro, micros, Bitcoin futures, smart money index rose to a record 13,711 last week. A record bias for bullish long positions comes days ahead of the SEC's impending decisions on spot ETF applications. Remember, we're looking at this in the first week of January, potentially. Some observers foresee a classic sell the news price action following the ETF launch. And that's what everybody says. But again, just like we took a look at, MicroStrategy is like, we really don't care. We're going to keep buying and we're going to dollar cost average and think it'll all, all work out. Even Kathy Woods said the exact same thing. She said, look, it's probably going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news type event. But everybody in all these articles, they have one thing in common. They all say the same thing. It could be a sell the rumor, buy the news. It could be a buy the rumor, sell the news. It could be a buy the rumor, sell the news. It really doesn't matter because in the long run, we think Bitcoin's going to go up. So anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And there's a couple of things that I will say that for me, I'm a dollar cost averager, so it really doesn't matter to me. I'm going to buy Bitcoin on that day. I'm going to buy Bitcoin the day after. I'm going to buy Bitcoin the day two days before. But I got to tell you, this market seems to not slow down, and it is undeterred from what's actually happening. Here's a couple of examples. First of all, I've been hearing about Mt. Gox, which, if you're not aware, was a centralized exchange, one of the very first, one of actually the first. And this was actually hacked uh, back in uh, late 2014, in February, I believe. Correct me in the comments section. It has taken them 10 years to pay out anything. They just did it actually starting this week. I've been hearing about this since 2017, 1890, 2021, 20, 22, and even this year. I didn't think they were actually doing it, but apparently they are. And they had 10 years to prepare for it. And guess what they did? They doubled up the, re the reimbursements for Mt. Gox trustees. <laughs> so I don't know if they were talking to the Celsius or Voyager team on how to run a business, but uh, that's actually what happened. So don't be alarmed. This isn't going to be like the worst thing of all time. Uh, just remember that uh, in September, Mt. Gox rehab trustee Nobuki Kobayashi nailed it, informed creditors by email that the defunct exchange, Mt. Gox, would begin repayments this year and set a complete reimbursement deadline of October 31st, 2024. So yes, this is going out. Yes, people will sell. But the question is, will it make a big dent? Not really. Right now, Bitcoin in the last 24 hours went up 3%. This news was yesterday. The double payments just went out today, and it's still up 0.1% in the last hour. So I don't really see it doing too much of a thing. We will see how it actually works out. Also, there was a news about this. Mark Cuban just dumped uh, almost 3 million, worth, uh, 3 million polygon, not 3 million worth of polygon, well, roughly. And the dump sparks a selling frenzy. This was just one day ago. Did it? No, it didn't. Polygon is up 7% in 24 hours. Actually, Polygon, Optimism, a couple of different layer twos for Ethereum are all up right now in the last 24 hours. So even bad news doesn't really make a dent. And you know what that means? If bad news doesn't make a dent, and we got a lot of things that are going on in the market and it's very extremely bullish as far as the sentiment, you know what that means? Big bull run, but I could be wrong. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. I do appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next one.